Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 23. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. So, Daniel, how are you? Oh, I'm good. A bit tired. Why are you tired? I just got home.、Uh, I walked all the way back from Damansara since I wasn't in the mood to drive. You know, traffic during Ramadan on Saturday nights. Can understand, can understand. And our guest for this week is, well, in conjunction with the Olympics, we have a sportsman on the show. He is a cyclist representing Slango. Not only does he cycle, he also does kendo. And the best part is, he customizes ponies. We bring you Mel Hilton, Malaysia Brony Society's very own sportsman. Hi, everybody. My name is Mel Hilton, and I'm a cyclist. And I do customize ponies to make it so accurate. So, anyway,、um, before we start the show, I have to ask you the four basic questions. And question number one is Who's your favorite pony? My favorite pony is Twilight Sparkle. Oh, Twilight. Why Twilight? Because whenever I look at Twilight Sparkle's face, she's so cute. Well, she's the... Twilight licious. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting way to describe Twilight. What's your favorite episode? Well, season one or season two? Up to、Why、you. One from both. Okay, one from both. Uh, from season one is Friendship is Magic Part One and Part Two. Season two is the season finale and Smile. You mean、uh, a friend indeed? Ah、uh, yeah, yeah, friend indeed. Hey, I like that episode too. That's my favorite one as well. <laughs> okay, well at least you guys have something in common. Why do you like a friend indeed? I like friend indeed because of the song. Ah, I see. So how do you become a fan of the show? One of my friends showed me this video of MLP FM. And I was like, "Whoa, dude! Seriously, you want me to watch the show?" And I was like, "No, man." Then he was like, "Oh, sad face." <laughs> <laughs> Then the moment that I went back home, I start searching for MLP Fire. Then I found Equestria Daily. Then I watched all the PMBs and stuff. And so from then on, you became a fan of the show via your friend and EQD. Yes, and I modified everything in my life. So,、um, oh, yeah. did your friend found out that you were into the show? Yes, because I'm an open brony.、Oh, okay, I bet he has kudo points for getting you into the brony dom. Yeah, some of my friends doesn't like me just because you like the show. Yeah, he say, "Do you gay? Since you watch girls show, you stay away from me." <laughs> I think it's a general response. I get it as well. I don't. Well, said this. Well, I'm older and I can do anything I want. Oh, really? Now? Yeah, basically, I am Spider Man, so I can do anything I want. Anyway, let's move on. So, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Well, my parents know that I watch MLP and Fire every day. Wow, every day you watch? Yeah.、Oh. Awesome. Every day. In our living room TV. Okay, so your parents are okay with it? Yeah, my parents are okay with it. Have they joined you? Yeah, my mom. At first, my dad was like. No, why are you watching? Are you watching the girls' show? And I was like, yes.、Oh. No, you should have answered. No, I'm watching a boys' show made for girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, credits for being honest. <laughs> okay,、uh, so after that? After that, my family knows that I'm a brony because they saw my room. Okay. Full of ponies, wallpaper, posters. You gotta send me a picture of your room. I gotta see that. Yeah, will do. Okay, what about your friends? My friends, some of them are brownies. I turn them into brownies. Awesome. I turn two percent to brownies. Yeah. So cool, what's your success rate like? You know, as in like how if you let's say、um, if you try three people, one of them will become a brony. Is it? Is how? What's your rate like? How many people have you tried? I try to brony-fy around four people. Only two success. I see. Well, it's a fifty-fifty chance shot. Yeah, it's a good job. My mine is like what twenty-five. Okay, twenty-five out of what? Hundred lah. Ah, okay. But in Japan, I managed to bonify the whole class. Congratulations!、Oh. Wait, wait, okay, okay. Before we congratulate him, how many people are in that class? Around ten to fifteen people. Ten、so、to fifteen. Good. good. <laughs> the, the age is around standard five, standard six. So it's going to be thirty, fifteen, and fourteen, fifteen then. Yeah, th- that was my student exchange time. Oh, okay, okay. Before we before we move on to housekeeping, I I want to ask, how did you manage to bonify everybody in the class? Ah,、uh, I managed to bring my laptop to the school because of student exchange program. We went to a, an elementary school in Makinoara,、okay. Tokyo. So we had a projector. 
Ah. All right. So I played one of the episodes, and they like it. What episode do you start? I start with the first and second episode. Oh, huh, okay. Good interesting. Choice. Interesting. So, I tried I mean, that at a local restaurant. They asked me to turn the volume down. Well, they, it, it was like, oh, so good. You gotta walk in. But the but the show was in English, right? So did they understand? Some of them understand, but they tell me the characters are so cute because of the eyes. True, true. Mm, yeah. So in housekeeping, Daniel, why don't you take the first one? All right, of course I'll take the first one this week, and um, we're looking at drivethesensation dot com goes full on Brony, and if you all don't know what drivethesensation dot com is, it is my personal blog that I've been maintaining for five years. So to celebrate. My blog's fifth anniversary. I'm turning it into a completely bonified blog. As it's complete, and as in like everything is to be bonified. It is now called Letters to Celestia, Two Worlds, One Brony. Go check it out at drivethesensation.com. It's the same philosophical stuff I write. You know, I talk about life. I talk about the challenges I face. I talk about things I don't like in this world. Except that you know, I'm not like throwing it up in the air now. I'm telling Celestia about it since you know she listens. I hope. Okay. Um. So. What about your previous listeners? Are they going to be bothered by it or not? Um, readers, it's not. It's not a podcast. It's just a blog. It's a text-based blog. Oh, okay. And uh, how do you say? I'm not sure because my reader count is really chaotic. It's really up and down. And what happened is that when I became a brony, when I started writing about ponies, I think I had a little shift in audience because I've been monitoring my statistics and I noticed that you know my audience has been driven to my blog based on a lot of brony sites. You know. Um, there used to be Pony Square. Uh, there's Equestria Daily once in a while because when I used to write up for our meetups, I put it up on the blog, and I would do it in the form of a letter to Celestia. So, you're going to ponyify your blog. Basically, you're going to rent and do stuff, but instead of in the general audience, it's going to be to Celestia, right? Well, of course, I don't want to rent to Celestia. Following my new tagline of Two Worlds One Brony. My old tagline still stands, which is celebrating diversity since 2007, because I've always been in this uh, very united, diverse spirit. And uh, what happened is that when I started writing to Celestia instead, I just did it for fun. When I became a brony, I wrote a letter to Celestia, and that was just when I first joined MBS. And that was such a long time ago. And I felt really good because it was really a different type of writing experience for me, especially because I really cannot write letters for nuts. When I start writing, especially formal letters, you know, I think if you see my let- if I if you're a company, you see a formal letter from me come in, you probably want me in jail. <laughs> so uh, when I started writing to Celestia, I found it much different because I can relate to Celestia pretty well. I like Celestia; she is best princess. <laughs> no wonder your son lover. Nobody writes to Luna, and Cadence, I don't think she, ch- she checks her mail. So uh, basically, yeah. That's okay. why I write to Celestia, and uh, I don't have a dragon, sadly, but I'm sure she has the internet. Okay, okay. Okay, before we move on, Mel, who's best princess? Cadence, of course. Hmm, okay. Cadence is prettiest princess. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, let's move on. And in the second housekeeping, thank you, Bronyville. On episode 65 of Bronyville, we got a mention on their show. Their guest, Emmett Hall, was asking, is there one country that likes MLP more than another? Chef Sandy answered United States. But he did also mention some countries like United Kingdom, Australia, Saudi Arabia, and also Malaysia. And he also mentioned that Malaysia has its own MLP podcast. I wonder who has a Malaysian MLP podcast. Hmm... Well, anyway, thank you, Chef Sandy. Okay, anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. And in today's topic, My Little Monopoly. Back in episode 20, we talked about how awesome it was that they were making a Monopoly game, but it was not the version we want. But the Living Tombstone did chime in some good ideas. Instead of going to jail, you get sent to the moon and stuff like that. Well, someone listened and made a full-fledged My Little Pony board game. Links can be found in the show notes. So guys, what do you think? I can picture myself just playing and, you know, I get a chance card that asks, do you like bananas? You know what is going to happen to you? (laughs) Because there's no way out of that question. Oh. And also, they really even ponified the money. Yeah, everything's there. Money, the cards. I mean, they don't have to go all the way to turning... Equestria into some sort of capitalist nation, but it works. I like it. We should come up with our own chance cards, and Do You Like Bananas is definitely one of them. No, they, they made everything. Everything's set. Like, I can't find the chance in community as com- 
Oh, they are. Oh, wow. Whoa. Like, but anyway, the whole board game is pretty cool. And you know how they do the tokens and stuff? Like the figs? Yeah. You use your oh. own pocket ponies. Not really pocket ponies. Sorry. Um, you use your own... Blind bags? Yeah, you use your own blind bags. But then think about it, you know. Ponyville is worth 80 bits on the map and it's a purple property. This is the first one. Because it, Ponyville is not that great of a place. It's, it's small. It's the best place in Equestria. Marketplace is there. The main six live there. The elements of how many live in Ponyville. Five or six of them at least do. Four, yeah. four, four. So well, if you're talking about... Okay, now we're getting into financial of Ponyville, a country that does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> and Cloudsdale, which is smaller, is worth a blue property at the end. Come on. Okay, Daniel, have you seen the map of Equestria? Yes, I have. Size doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, like, like we're saying, okay, okay. to sum it up, this board game is awesome. Yes, it is. Okay, let's move on to the next news topic. And Daniel, why don't you do it? Alright, let's take a look at this. So, Fighting is Magic has sadly been leaked. If any of you have been playing Fighting is Magic or you've got your hands on the game, we're sorry you are playing a leaked version of Fighting is Magic. There's a link in the show notes to the Equestria Daily article and it says that on the 2nd of August 2012, the highly anticipated game Fighting is Magic got leaked. One of the QA testers, he actually leaked the game on the internet and as a result, the Fighting is Magic developers have terminated their internal QA testing program. The link can be found once again in the show notes. And they have an open letter as well as a press release about it. You seem angry about it. Well, of course you'll be angry. I mean, most creative works, especially if Emilio is here, I think he can relate to it as well as musicians who do creative stuff. When you, like, release something for testing, especially works in progress, that's why a lot of artists, if you notice, they're very touchy about works in progress. What happened is that if, let's say, I were to tell someone, uh, this is a song I half wrote, can you tell me what you think about it? It's always got a watermark on it, so I make sure people don't distribute or anything like that. Although, it can't fully protect. Yeah, true, but... You don't know, want half big stuff coming out. Because, you know, even Microsoft does it, which is why the Mac, versus Mac and PC wars also start, because Microsoft releases their things before they cook it properly. Well, you seem to be very passionate about this. <laughs> well, I've always been a techie, and I've never liked, you know, things that... I mean, I'm, not, I'm against plagiarism, but this is something that's worse, you know. They put... A lot of trust in QA testers because they're like, all right, we're giving you a all exclusive pass that no one else in the world has to test a game that so many people in the world are dying to play. I mean, think about it. You broke a picky promise. It's not 100% the QA testers. It could be one of their friends who broke in and downloaded the game. I mean, it could have been, yes, but... Um, as a QA tester, you are, of course, responsible to keep it safe because you're holding something of value. It's sad that it got leaked, but, well, what can you do, right? Just make it better because, like, from what people are saying, the game is, eh, it's okay. Some are really hyped and some are not so hyped. Yeah, that's true. I- I'm really hyped about it, but I'm a person that doesn't like spoilers. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in guest time, hey. we have Mel. Hi, Mel. How are you? Hi, guys. You haven't been Hi. talking a lot. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not a talkative. <laughs> okay, now here's your chance to talk. So, before we start, um, you want to say anything about yourself to people who don't really know who you are? I'm Mel Victor, and I'm a track cyclist representing Raya Persekutuan, and I do pursuit racing, and I do customize ponies to make it so accurate. I see here you also do kendo. So, yes. not only do you ride bicycles, you also whack people with sticks. <laughs> I do do kendo in school last year and I'm at the third Q level third Q so in comparison with taekwondo is third Q your black belt already or uh, no third Q is not the black belt the black belt is the first time so you ride bicycles you play yes, sports day. basically you're a jock who likes ponies that is rare. Seriously, I heard there are some athlete bronies out there, but to talk to one right now, it's really rare. I wonder if there are any bronies in the Olympics. Well, considering Maybe. how big it is, I have to say yes. So let's get into some questions. So Daniel, why don't you ask the questions? I don't know if I should ask the first one, because uh, I, want, I wanted to ask, is your name really Mel Hilton? Of course not. Yes. Ah, Mel Hilton. Hang on, hang on. 100% really. Yes, I mix. Mix what, huh? Mix with Sinan. Oh, okay, wow, wow. Mel Hilton, really? Yes. 
Huh. Well, there's ink on my face. But my family name is Sita. I pray you're not related to Paris Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> no. Who knows? So, your real name is Mel Hilton. Wow. That's yes. a really awesome name. Awesome. Okay, so uh, my second question is, uh, because uh, we know you're into customizing ponies, when customizing them, there are so many possibilities, and you spoke that um, that you are into customizing them to be sure accurate, right? Yeah. What about other type of customizations? Do you make? Do you do people's OCs? Do you do background characters out of uh, models or anything like that? Currently, no. I see. But now I'm customizing Trixie and Lyra. Oh, okay. Can you make Lyra sit? Maybe. How do you choose which ponies you want to do to customize? Because there's so many ponies anyway. So which? How do you choose? First, I choose my favorite. Then, I choose the background ponies. So, I guess you've done yeah. Twilight already. Yeah, I've done Twilight. The whole main six? Future Twilight, main six. Wow, future Twilight. Yeah. Are you an avid collector? Do you like to collect stuff outside the Brony fandom, you know, stamps or anything like that? Yep, my house is full of stuff. Like, what else do you collect? I love to collect antique stuff, like Coke bottles, record. Oh, you have a record collection as well? Yes, and body cup. My last question is, do you take commissions? Because if I want, let's say I want to have my OC made. Not sure about that. If I make a picky face, would you do it? Sure. <laughs> well, since this is not video, you won't get yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, Norman, over to you. Any questions from you? Okay, I sure do have some. So, my questions are, how did you get into cycling? I started cycling since I was 8 years old. Then, I started joining the cycling team at age 15. Then I start going to the tournament and stuff. I won several tournaments. I won two first place tournaments. Oh, cool. Then the Wilaya Pusikaduan team asked me to join the team. Wow. So our next tournament is this September in Cal Valero. Oh. If you guys want to see me race, you can come by. That is an awesome story. Ride bikes, gets noticed by Wilaya Pusikaduan and join their team. Cool. So, um, you also do kendo, right? Yep. How did you get into that? I joined kendo since I was from one. Basically, our school just established kendo club in 2002. So, it's kind of new. Oh. Our school is the first to establish kendo club in Malaysia. Wow. So, you're one of the first few students that practice kendo then? Yes, in Malaysia. Wow, that's awesome. But I'm not that pro in kendo. Well, it takes time and dedication to be pro. So anyway, um, besides sports, you're into customizing ponies. How did you get into that? Well, I love to do it yourself stuff. I love to do that. I customize my bikes, customize everything, my rule and stuff. So I love customizing ponies. So basically, you like to work with your hands and customize yes. everything you love, right? Yes, I love to work with my hand, customizing stuff. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Dusty Cat. Did you ponify any of your bikes? Yes. I put Twilight Sparkle in the ring. Wow. Anybody notice? Yes. <laughs> okay, what did they you ask? You have to send us a picture. We'll do. My coach saw it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What did he say? He was like, speechless. Oh. He was like, okay. Well, did, was it Twilight Sparkle, the pony, or the cutie mark? The pony. Oh, God. Oh, I, I laminated it. <laughs> And I put it in the spokes. Oh. In the spokes. Okay, anyway. So, you got any tips for people who want to customize their ponies? Yes. So, do you guys want to customize ponies? First thing you do, don't ever mess up the main and the most importantly, the cutie marks. That's the most important part. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the eye. And the eye. So, things to look out for is main eyes and cutie mark, right? Okay, cool. What about the tail? Is it also important? The tail, yeah, you need to tie it up with a band, then you paint it. Ah, I see. Paint with what? Paint with Tamiya. You mean the Tamiya spray? Tamiya spray and some poster colors. Mm, okay. So which do you put first, the poster color or the Tamiya spray? First, I put the poster color, then I spray it. So I take the Celesta. The original Celesta is pink color, right? Yeah, yes. right. So first, I color it with white poster color. Then I spray it with white spray. Then I spray it with clear spray to make it permanently. Oh. Ah. So my last question is, so you like playing Forza 4 and i seen some screenshots of your work and you loving customizing everything you love. How did you do that with Forza and without a keyboard and mouse? 
you take some vectors from DA, Divina, then you put it in your flash drive and tuck it in your Xbox and upload it and design yourself. Oh, so basically you just upload a picture from your flash drive and copy paste it into Forza 4 then? So you mean other than that, it's all done with the Xbox 360 controller, no keyboard, no mouse? Yeah. Wow. Takes okay. a lot of hard work. Yeah, because every time I saw your videos, I thought, I yeah, keyboard, mouse, and I like, eh? No keyboard and mouse, wow. Yeah, it's the 360. It's not like the PS3 where you can plug in a keyboard and mouse. I think you can plug in a keyboard and mouse on the 360. Yeah, I don't know. I never, tried to, I never touched an Xbox, so I really wouldn't know. I haven't even seen the startup screen for an Xbox. Go to YouTube, type in startup screen for Xbox 360. I want to see it on an Xbox, not on YouTube. <laughs> uh, and we got some Facebook questions. Mio ask, when does the love for bikes grew on you? Wow, that's a strange way to ask. <laughs> the love for bikes grew on me when I was 8 years old. And it grew ever I since, right? Way, way then. Yeah, grew ever since, still today. Cool. Okay, um, Daniel, you want to take this one? Okay, Eugene Kewe Lau, he asks, Do you usually encounter a brony that you've never encountered before in Toys R Us? Yes. You do? I encountered him. Him? Eugene? Oh, oh, whoa, oh, okay. <laughs> oh. No wonder. Self-plug, okay. okay. Uh, here's a story. So that day in KLCC, I was browsing for ponies. Then this dude, this Chinese dude, was looking at me like, looking, staring at me. Then he asked me, why do you buy ponies? Who do you buy it for? I said, I buy it for my, my sister. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I don't have a sister. That's a trap because usually people say daughter or something like that because sister is way overused by brony. Every brony suddenly has a little sister. <laughs> okay. You don't know why I suddenly got Then he asked me, do you like ponies? Then I said yes. <laughs> Then he was like, oh my god, this is my first time seeing a real-life pony. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Then I invited him to the group, invited him to the meetups. Ah, uh, you guys remember the C2H meetup? Yeah, I yeah. was there. Yeah, he was there. Oh, cool. Uh, as usual, I'm not paying attention, but Eugene, if you saw me and I kind of just said this, well, hi. Well, I'm just there because of, well, I was there. I don't even remember why I'm there. <laughs> Community. Yeah, true, but oh yeah, I was there just to meet Joey. Yeah. Oh, Joey Chua. Basically, I was it? No, I didn't drive you there. Vincent drove you there. True, from true. My house. It was an interesting experience. Yeah, I'm not exactly a very good host. Just found out as well. <laughs> oh, so says you. Well, that's rather interesting. And Eugene, if you're listening to the show, hi! Hope you listen to us even more. So go let in Toys R Us, you may find more. Yep. So the last question from Facebook is from Samuel. So he asks, do you like foldies? Because I like foldies. And um, does anyone know what he's talking about? Uh, foldies is a foldable bike, folding bike. Oh, okay. So Which is common these days and very famous in Japan too. Because it's very handy and it's very, very light. Oh, so do you like foldies? Kind of, but... I'm more into track bike. Okay, and cool. track bike doesn't have brakes, for your information. Really? They don't have brakes? Are they fixed gear bikes? Yeah, they, they are fixed gear bikes. Oh, track so, bikes are fixed gear? Yeah. Oh, I see. So, how do you brake? You reverse your pedal back to the back. Oh. Cycle to the back. So, the bike will slow down slowly. Ah. You know, Norman, when you're riding a bike, and then, you know, usually bikes, you stop pedaling, the bike still goes. Yeah, yeah. In uh, this yeah, case, yeah. you stop pedaling, the bike pedals you. <laughs> yep, in Malaysia, they call it Perewel Mati. Perewel is cock and Mati is the gear, fifth gear. Alright, cool. Uh, I've seen that one before. I mean, if you're talking about the pixie bikes, um, I pixie. have... Pixie or pixie? Pixie. Pixie, uh, pixie bike, yeah, it's very famous all over the world. Hmm. And now in Malaysia, I, I thought it was the teenagers, they ride right without helmets. Can you imagine? Yeah, I mean, brother I, helmet. <laughs> I thought it, it was no. called Pixies. Okay, so it's called Pixies. Pixies eh? is what Tinker Bell uses at <laughs> Pixies. Pixies, okay. But anyway, my opinion about the Pixie bikes is, well, basically, they're dangerous. Yeah, you need to learn to ride Bell it. is a pro, normally. 
I mean, I'm talking in general because, like, just imagine this: you have no brakes, you're riding on the road, no helmet, no safety gear, and no brakes, and you're an amateur who got no idea what you're doing. Usually, nowadays the fixie bikes sell on shop. They had a break. Only well, at least break. one break because Malaysian government asked them to put one break because it's dangerous. Yeah, because like I said, not everybody knows how to use the gear brakes, like yeah. what Mel does. But anyway, like Mel here, he knows what he's doing. He has how many years? Yeah, uh, I ride his gear bike for more than five years. He has five years of experience with it, so he knows what he's doing. Like what I'm seeing these days are like teenage people riding bikes with. I I'm not gonna say anymore. Like my opinion of pixie bikes is they're dangerous. I rather have a BMX bike. So, any of you guys ride bikes out there, so ride safe. Always wear a helmet. And if you're riding at night, always wear a blinker. Those are good tips. Yes. To my brother, if you're listening, you heard it from the pro. Wear a helmet. Okay, anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And our next topic is email time. I think I'm getting trolled by the fans. You know I need emails, right, for email time. Why no email? Send some emails. Okay, anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com. In fact, if you just want to talk to us and just say something, just email us. Don't worry, we don't bite. And you can also reach us on Twitter. The show is at the MBS show. I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'm at St. Pinky. And Mel, do you have a Twitter? Yes. My Twitter is at Meru. M-E-R-U. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Links will be provided in the show notes. And if you want to reach us on iTunes, all you have to do is search for The MBS Show using your iOS or your Apple device. It even works on iTunes on PC, so don't worry. So, I've been Norman Sanzo. I'm Daniel Anthony. And I'm Mel Hilton. And I'll see you next week. Alright, bye.
I wonder who has a Malaysian MLP podcast. Hmm. Well, anyway, thank you, Chef Sandy. Awkward silence. Nobody has to say anything about. 